take a look at the study questions for reading 29, the opening of John Addington Simmons' uh, A Problem in Modern Ethics, which is a remarkable book, I think, in all respects, especially given the time that it was written. It's really a pioneering work. It wasn't as if there weren't other things written, serious things written, about homosexuality. He draws on them in his books. But there hadn't been a, a statement like his, which has kind of a moral uh, aim, really is a statement of gay rights, I think, to put it in our language. And in that respect, as far as I know, it's unique. It's the first. Number one, in his opening remarks, Simmons describes the geographical and historical ubiquity of inverted sexuality. What does he mean by that term? He means uh, homosexuality. He means being gay, uh, whatever our contemporary language. Yes, inverted sexuality in contemporary terms. I don't know what contemporary terms are. For a long time, it was homosexuality. I don't know if that term sounds right anymore, but uh, I guess it's still the official term. Oh, being gay. Number two, in his introduction to the book, published in 1892, Simmons feels he must argue why it is even proper to discuss it at all. That is, I mean, I think that that opening, a very, very interesting opening where he basically claims that every culture at every time has had um, some homosexual activity and element to it, um, is really meant to justify the um, focus here on homosexuality. I mean, uh, to say that it's ubiquitous, it, it is, it's everywhere. <laughs> you know, it, it, there's, there's no culture, contemporary culture, contemporary nation, in which it's not a strong uh, element. Uh, there never has been. Is really, I think, an argument that, that meant to overcome both the moral objection and the squeamishness that people feel, uh, especially at the time, and even bringing up the subject. I, I'd say that that's true of a, a smaller number of people in our culture, in 21st century America, but it's certainly not unknown. Uh, people just don't want to talk about it. They don't feel comfortable talking about it. And that may be a confusion of both moral objections that they may have and just a squeamishness of talking about something that, that is unfamiliar to them and that scares them. So I think that Simmons is well aware that there is a, a common disgust as well as a moral objection to homosexuality. So he's got to, in a certain way, justify the very fact that he's writing a book about it. Number three, according to Simmons, what are the historical roots of the, quote, social antipathy towards quote, sexual inversion. It was quite interesting suggestion that the historical roots are really in the <coughs> European uh, adoption of Christianity. That is, in the earlier cultures, what he calls the pagan cultures. Um, homosexuality, although it might not have been exactly um, celebrated, although he does suggest that in Greek culture, Sometimes it was. It was not considered uh, something immoral and certainly not something that was viewed as dangerous. But that in the transition to Christian uh, society and Christian rulers and Christian law or Christian influence law in to the post-classical uh, civilizations, that uh, there was an adoption of some of the Comments made in both in the Old and New Testament, very few, but they are there, uh, both from the Mosaic Law in the Old Testament and from rather notorious remark made by uh, Paul, I believe in Letter to the Romans. <coughs> so that once, what was once a, a, a society, pre-Christian European societies or classical societies, Greece and Rome, in which homosexuality was just more or less an accepted part of life, uh, to a society um, 
based on the Old and New Testaments that, that saw homosexuality as a, a perversion, a crime against nature. And also uh, the suggestion with the laws of Justinian, uh, you know, the Byzantine Empire, the later Roman Empire, really, uh, something that was uh, dangerous to the state. And a, um, you know, thinking, I suppose, thinking about the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah in the uh, book of Genesis in the Old Testament, that uh, these so-called crimes against nature were also crimes against God and could be punished in the form of uh, famine, earthquakes, uh, disease, you know, pestilence. So basically, I think Simmons would say superstition. Uh, number four, Simmons is concerned with proving that homosexuality is often, if not always, inborn. Why do you think this is important to him? I think this is a very complex question or a very complex issue. You know, uh, I, I think that uh, I have deep questions about why it would matter. And that is why it would matter whether homosexuality was something that people are born with a disp disposition towards or rather something that they developed and, and, and chose. I think it's a tricky question. I think in many people's minds, and maybe in Simmons' mind, and maybe he can be forgiven for this, given his place in history, or his time in history, but things can be ju easy, more easily justified, morally, I suppose, uh, if they are natural, as opposed to something that we develop as a result of experience and choice. I think it was important to him because he mentions that the, the, the common prejudice about homosexuality is it's a result of debauchery. That basically homosexuality is a result of people becoming tired of so-called normal sex, heterosexual sex, uh, decadently sort of uh, you know, developing these, these particular uh, and uh, unnatural tastes because they've sort of become bored with normal sex or something or that. And he wants to argue against that prejudice, this misconception, and say that no, I mean, it, it, most homosexual men are, and by implication, women. Although, of course, the book isn't really about women, is it? Uh, but uh, that most homosexuals are born w with a, a natural uh, inclination to be attracted to the to, to to people of the same sex as themselves. And that this is not something that is a result of some sort of uh, debauchery or um, perversion of uh, normal sexual instincts that people start with. That's just a sexual instinct that you do start with. So it was quite important to him, and I think it was quite important. Again, I have questions about it because I think that that, that whole strategy of <clears throat> justifying things by, by Establishing that they're natural is very questionable and actually dangerous, but that's another concern. Number five, for Simmons, what makes ancient Greek culture special with regard to sexual inversion? Well, because homosexuality was an established part of the culture, although that is not such an easy or simple thing. Um, I think that Simmons exaggerates the degree to which homosexuality was practiced openly and celebrated. It was, to a certain extent. He, he mentions the Theban band, uh, at least refers to it obliquely a couple times, maybe maybe directly, at least once. The Theban band <clears throat> was a part of the Theban army that was composed of pairs of lovers. Um, I think that this is not mythical. It actually was true. That is, that there was a, uh, they were composed of, of, of couples, gay couples, uh, who fought together side by side, and they were thought to be um, you know, not unconquerable, obviously, because they were conquered by Alexander the Great, but that they were a particularly effective part of the army. And the idea was that if two, if two lovers were fighting side by side, they would certainly fight more heroically and uh, more uh, bravely to, in, in front of their, their beloved. So that was real, you know. So that was, you know, that that the very fact that the Theban band was a real thing, say, you know, from the city of Thebes. That's why they're called the Theban band. It was a recognition that Greek culture was different from Christian culture, at least. Um, 
that is, the, the, the love and physical love between men was mentioned and was not necessarily condemned, that in itself makes Greek culture special. Now, contemporary work on, <clears throat> you know, the complexities of how homos what we would call homosexual activity was viewed amongst the different Greeks at different times. That That is a complex subject, but I think that Simmons, I would say, Simmons is generally right about that, that uh, homosexuality, what we would call homosexuality, was accepted amongst the Greeks. Just wasn't a big deal to them. <laughs>